Hey, praise the Lord. Greeting in Jesus' name. This is Brother Quinn. Those of you who know me and who have watched many or all of my videos and have followed this channel for the last three or four years, you know that at one time a long time ago I used to be in prison, federal prison. I uh, committed a felony in armed robbery in 1994. And uh, actually, actually, it was an armed bank robbery. And I don't know if I've ever shared that on YouTube, but that's what it was. The craziest thing I ever did in my life, something that uh, the day that it was over, I marveled at it, even though I was a sinner at that time. And I, I marveled at the fact that I did that. And I said to myself many times, if you would have told me a month ago that I was going to do what I did yesterday, I would have never believed you. But circumstances in life led me to do something crazy that I thought I never thought I would do. But anyway, that being beside the point, I went to prison in 1995 and was there until 2004. And during that time, I came to know the Lord Jesus Christ. And I'm not ashamed of that at all. What better place to come to the knowledge of the truth to finally get right with your life than in prison? Um, not that it's a good thing to play with the Lord and, and read the Bible while you're in prison and then put it down when you get out. But to pick up the, the Bible and seek God and to come to Him and know Him while you're in prison is a wonderful and an awesome thing. In fact, that's why your life has been spared and you have that time. So what a blessing it is to use it for that. I digress from that. The reason that I am making this video, as you can see by the title, is for the love of a man named Kevin Zuber, who I hope will one day soon actually see this video and be able to hear the message that I've had in my heart for a long time for him. I've had this message in my heart for a long time, as I just said, and thought about making a video many times, but never really felt like it was something that I should do until today. I've been praying about it today. And this video is not only for the benefit of Kevin Zuber, but also for the benefit of all those who have been under his ministry and who are followers of his teachings. This video is not made to slander Kevin Zuber or to slander anybody. Uh, this video is not made to be contentious or prideful and, and to say, well, I'm better than you and I'm right and you're wrong, so you better listen to me, otherwise you're going to perish. Uh, but this video is a plea of love to Kevin Zuber and to all those who are uh, followers of his, friends of his, uh, that they would hear the word of the Lord that I have in my heart to share with them this day. When I was in prison, and the reason that I shared this with you in the beginning of the video, when I was in prison at FCI Phoenix, which is a a uh, federal men's facility just to the north of Phoenix, Arizona on the 17th freeway in Pioneer Road. There was a man named Kevin Zuber who came in every Monday night as a volunteer minister to preach the Word of God in the chapel there. And we used to gather together in the chapel and have what we call church. And I attended the Monday night meetings uh, under Mr. Zuber's ministry for probably, uh, I don't know, half a year, something like that. and. As I have shared with some of you before, when I first was born again and came to the Lord Jesus Christ, I didn't know the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. I thought that I was a Christian because I had accepted Jesus Christ as my personal Lord and Savior. And I was so hungry for the things of the Lord and, and so innocent in my knowledge that I would devour anything that anybody gave me that had to do with Jesus Christ. And so I got very into theology. Um, I got very into commentaries and theological books and theological teachers. And Mr. Zuber was among them, and he had what seemed to me to be great knowledge. And so I sat under his ministry. But as I sat under his ministry, little by little, there came out things in his speech that struck me as, for in the beginning, very odd, and towards the end of my time under his ministry, very grievous. And some of those things were as follows. I, when I went to uh, his meetings, I kept hearing him compliment those of us who were sitting under his ministry by using the term theologians, budding theologians. Oh, you, sir, are a budding theologian. And, and he meant that as a compliment, like we were coming to be uh, as he was. And we took that as compliments at that time. And I'm sure he meant it as a compliment. But now as that I'm a Christian, I know that being a theologian is definitely not a thing that someone who wants when they desire to serve the living God. Because theology and Christianity do not mix. Theology Theology and the doctrine of Christ are not compatible, even as water and oil are not compatible. And the reason that I say this is because the scripture says so, and I'm going to share this verse of the scripture with you in Isaiah, which testifies that the theologians are lost and confused. It says uh, in Isaiah 28:13, and may the Lord bless the reading of his word. 
But the word of the Lord was unto them precept upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line, here a little and there a little, that they might go and fall backward and be broken and snared and taken. And if you read the entire passage of Scripture, you'll see that the people that this is talking about, <coughs> when it says the word of the Lord was unto them, the word them, the personal pronoun them, is talking about a group of people who think themselves to be wise in the ways of the scripture, but they don't understand because they will not humble themselves as little children. To them, the scripture is precept upon precept. And I heard Mr. Zuber say that over and over and over when he was teaching, precept upon precept, as if it were a good and a right thing. And one day I was reading the scripture and I came upon this and I said, wait a minute, that they might go and fall backward and be broken and snared and taken? That doesn't sound like a good thing. And that is what is reserved for those people who view the word of the Lord as precept upon precept, line upon line, here a little and there a little. And theologians view the scripture as such. That's how theologians view the scripture. And that's how I began to know that theology is witchcraft and foolishness, and it has nothing to do with the doctrine of Christ or serving the Lord Jesus Christ. Theology is science. It's the study of God. And I, not that I have anything against science. True science is great, but there is a science in the Bible called science falsely so-called. I shouldn't say there is a science in the Bible. I should say there is a form of science referred to in the Bible as science falsely so-called. And there's a lot of those science falsely so-called. And theology is one of them. So that's one of the things that began to discourage me. And then one day as I was sitting in, in one of Mr. Zuber's Bible studies, I heard him say that at his church, which was at that time a denomination called Grace Brethren, um, that they baptize people three times. They put them in the water, and they say, in the name of the Father, and they dunk them in the water. Uh, in the name of the Son, then they dunk them in the water again. In the name of the Holy Ghost, and they dunk them in the water again. And at that time, I didn't know the gospel of Christ. I didn't know the doctrine of baptisms. Um, but I knew that that was wrong. And I couldn't have explained to you why at the time. I just knew that that was wrong. Um, and so that was kind of a red flag to me. Um, and now I know, of course, that there is no three names. Uh, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost are not names. There are not three baptisms. And there are not more than one faith in the Church of Jesus Christ. There is one Lord, one faith, and one baptism. And that baptism is a baptism of water and spirit, whereby we are baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ for the remission of our sins and filled with the Holy Ghost. And that brings me to the third red flag uh, that came up when I was sitting under Mr. Zuber's ministry. Uh, I had received the Holy Ghost at that time. Uh, I had received the Holy Ghost a few months after I was born again. And I heard him say in one of his meetings something that really disturbed me. He, he talked about those who received the Holy Ghost as if we were ignorant um, backwoods hicks, and he was mocking and he was saying something like, Wow, well, I received the gift of the Holy Ghost. <laughs> and he was talking about people who, who, Christians who received the gift of the Holy Ghost and speak with other tongues and prophesy, as the scripture says. And he was speaking of it as if only an idiot would believe something so ridiculous as that you would speak with other tongues when you received the gift of the Holy Ghost. And when I heard him say that, I left. I, I don't remember exactly if I walked out at that point or if I just left at the end of that meeting and never came back, but that was the end of my sitting under the ministry of Kevin Zuber, and it was a very sad thing um, because the man believes himself to be a Christian, but yet Jesus said, except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God, and Kevin Zuber is born of neither, and those that are under his ministry are born of neither. and. Um, Kevin Zuber is a Calvinist. He's not a Christian. Calvinists are not Christians. Calvinists are followers of, of the doctrine of a man named John Chauvin, who was called John Calvin, who was a very confused individual and wrote a very dangerous book called The Institutes of the Christian Religion. It's a really thick book about the size of two or three yellow pages phone books. And when you talk to a Calvinist, it's obvious that they're a Calvinist because they don't speak the word of God. They speak the doctrine of Calvin. And it's one of the most dangerous, pernicious Protestant doctrines that I've ever heard. 
it's awful to see people that are trapped in it. It's just awful. And I was caught up in it for a little while. When I, those first couple of years, I was born again and serving the Lord. And, and I was a, a believer of that once saved, always saved doctrine until one day someone came to me and challenged me on it. And I went into my little prison cell and I got my Bible open and I was going to write down every verse of scripture that I could find to prove to him that we could never lose our salvation. And it was in the process of doing that that God showed me that, that I was wrong. Uh, and that, of course, the Bible says from beginning to end that you can lose your salvation. You're, you're, when you're saved, you're saved from the power of sin so that you can live right before God. You're not saved from the wrath that is to come. You're not guaranteed a position in heaven no matter what you do. Uh, the scripture says that if we continue in the faith, grounded and settled, and be not moved away from the hope of the gospel, then we shall inherit the kingdom of God. He that endureth till the end shall be saved. He that overcometh, the scripture says. Jesus said that seven times in the Revelation. He that overcometh. And so this doctrine of Calvinism is dangerous and pernicious and ungodly. And the reason that I'm making this video is not to slander Kevin Zuber. It is to make a contra or not a contradiction. It is to make a comparison between the doctrine of Christ and the doctrine of Kevin Zuber so that you, Mr. Zuber, if you're watching this, or others who are who are disciples of Mr. Zuber, if you're watching this, so that you can see the difference between the doctrine of Christ and the Bible and the doctrine of Kevin Zuber and the Calvinists, so that if you have ears to hear, you may come to Jesus Christ and be saved. If you believe that Father, Son, and Holy Ghost are three names and that God is a trinity and that those who speak in tongues because they receive the Holy Ghost are ignorant, stupid hicks, then you're lost. You're deceived and you're lost. Because there is no triune God. There are no three persons in the Godhead. The Godhead is a singular noun that means the deity. God is a spirit and he was manifest in the flesh. He sent his son into the world. He has a begotten son, a man, the man Christ Jesus. And in that man Christ Jesus dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. What is the Godhead? It's God the Father. The Holy Ghost is God the Father. The Holy Ghost is God the Father. Let me say that one more time so it will sink in. The Holy Ghost is God the Father. When Jesus said, My Father, he was talking about the Holy Ghost. How do I know that? Well, Luke 135 tells of how the mother of Jesus Christ became with child. It was by the Holy Ghost. Okay, the Holy Ghost is the Father of Jesus Christ. God is a spirit. And that spirit is called the Holy Ghost. That's what the Spirit of God is called, the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost is not a third person of a trinity. He's not a person separate from God the Father. The Holy Ghost is God the Father. God is a spirit, and he was manifest in the flesh. So there is no trinity. There is a God who is a spirit, and there is a Son of God who is a man. And inside that man, the Son of God, dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. God was manifest in the flesh. It's just that simple. So there is no trinity. There is no triune God. And therefore, there are no three baptisms. There's one baptism. The baptism is in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. And the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost is Jesus Christ. How do I know that? Well, because Jesus commanded his disciples to go forth and baptize, teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. And that's what they did. From the first day that Peter began to preach the gospel, and the other apostles preached it too, they told people to repent and to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is a name. Father, Son, and Holy Ghost are not names. Jesus Christ is the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. So if someone puts you in the water and they say, I baptize you in the name of the Father and the name of the Son and the name of the Holy Ghost, they're performing a pretend, blasphemous, fake, counterfeit Catholic ritual that has nothing to do with the Lord Jesus Christ or his word or his church. But if a man of God takes you and tells you of the gospel of Jesus Christ, that you can receive remission of sins through his name, and you believe that gospel, and he puts you in the water, and he says, I baptize you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins, and puts you under that water, and pulls you back up out again. What just happened is that you have received the remission of your sins, even as the people of Israel received remission of their sins, when John the Baptist was sent to baptize them unto repentance for the remission of their sins. Mark chapter 1 verse 4. And so after the New Testament was established on the, on the day of uh, Pentecost in 33 AD in the second chapter of the book of Acts, Jesus' disciples went forth and preached baptism in his name for the remission of sins, whether you're Jew or Gentile, so that you could get your sins remitted. 
And if you haven't been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, believing that it is for the remission of your sins through his name, then you haven't received remission of your sins. I don't care if you're born again. I don't care if you go to church every week. I don't care if you drive the Sunday school bus. I don't care if you're the bishop of the Western region. I don't care if you give everything that you have to the poor. If you haven't obeyed the gospel of Christ, you're not a Christian, Mr. Zuber. You're not a Christian, disciples of Mr. Zuber. You're not a Christian, Calvinist. If you haven't been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, you have not received remission of your sins. There's no other way in the scripture, according to the Holy Bible, that you in this period in history, since the day that the, the New Testament began, the second chapter of Acts, there's no other way for you to receive the remission of your sins than to repent and be baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And when you do that, the Bible says that you will receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost is Jesus Christ in you, the hope of glory. It is God the Father, the Almighty God, the only God there is, whose name is Jesus Christ. That's why his son's name is Jesus Christ, because he got his name by inheritance from his father. Hebrews chapter 1, verse 4. John chapter 5, verse 43, I am come in my father's name. John chapter 17, I have made manifest thy name unto these which thou hast given me. Okay, the name of the Son of God is Jesus Christ because that's the name of his Father. It just makes perfect sense. Okay? The Holy Ghost is God the Father. His name is Jesus Christ. And when you get filled with the Holy Ghost, you will speak with other tongues and prophesy. The, the prophets of the Old Testament said it, Moses said it, Isaiah said it, and Paul quoted it in the New Testament in 2 Corinthians 6, verse 16. And it began in the book of Acts in chapter 2, and it continued all throughout the book of Acts. Every time that the apostles of Christ preached the gospel, they went forth, the people were born of water and of the Spirit, because Jesus said, except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. And Paul said in the letter to Titus, that God hath saved us, not by our own works, but not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us by the washing of regeneration and the renewing of the Holy Ghost, which he shed on us abundantly through Jesus Christ, our Savior. That is how a man is saved. So, Mr. Zuber, I've been wanting for years to make this video to you. I wrote a letter to you, an email to you years ago. And I don't even know if you received it. I never had a response from you. But it has been on my heart to share with you the gospel of Jesus Christ since it was revealed to me and since I left prison in 2004. And now I have this opportunity and permission from the Lord to make this video. And this video has not been made to slander you or slander your followers or to knock anybody's religion or anybody's church or anything like that. It has just been made for the specific purpose of comparing, contrasting the doctrine of Kevin Zuber with the doctrine of Jesus Christ so that those who have eyes to see may see, that those who have ears to hear may hear, and that you may be saved. Mr. Zuber, you have great uh, theological knowledge. But even as Paul said that it would be counted as dung in his eyes, I pray that it will be counted as dung in your eyes, and I pray that you will ditch all of that worthless confusion that you have learned in seminaries over the years and that you have disseminated in various places over the years and that you will hear the Word of God, the New International, or excuse me, when you were coming to the prison, you read from the New American Standard Bible. The New American Standard Bible is not the Word of God, Mr. Zuber. If you read English, the King James Version of the Bible is the Word of God. Okay, And, and I know that if you're hearing this, you're going to laugh at me and you're going to think that I'm stupid and I don't know what I'm talking about whatever that's between you and God. But according to the scripture, it is not possible for two Bibles in the same language that say two different things to both be God's word. Because the scripture says every word of God is pure. He is a shield unto them that put their trust in him. It says all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for correction, for reproof, for doctrine, for instruction in righteousness. Now how can two Bibles that say two different things both be profitable for correction when they don't say the same thing? That's just not possible. Okay. How can one Bible, which says, um, pardon me for just a moment, my Bible, the King James Bible, says, And I say unto you, whosoever shall put away his wife, except it be for fornication, and shall marry another, committeth adultery. And whoso marrieth her, which is put away, doth commit adultery. 
but I'm pretty sure that the New American Standard Bible doesn't say except to be for fornication. I think it says except to be for sexual immorality. Okay, so when you change the Word of God, you change the doctrine of Christ. Because the New American Standard Bible gives people permission in the churches to put away their wives and marry someone else because their wife did something that they consider to be sexually immoral. But the King James Bible, where the, the words of Jesus Christ said, except for fornication, teaches that the only way that you can put away your wife and marry another is if she's found to be sexually unfaithful to, your, to her husband before their wedding, which is called fornication. And once they're married, once the wedding is consummated, if the wife commits an act of sexual immorality, it is called adultery. And it's very serious, but it is not a cause for a man to put away his wife and marry another. And if he does, he's committing adultery because that woman is his wife as long as they live. That's just one example. One word. One word has been changed from one Bible to another. And it creates a doctrine that is false and is causing people to be, to be sealed unto destruction. Because if you put away your wife and marry another... You are committing adultery, and adulterers shall not inherit the kingdom of God. How many people are there in your church, Mr. Zuber, who have divorced their wives and their husbands and are married to other people, sitting in your church in open adultery before God and men, because the New American Standard Bible says that what they're doing is okay? But the Holy Bible says that what they're doing is wrong, that it's adultery, and that they will not inherit the kingdom of God. If you speak English, the King James Version of the Bible is the Word of God. And it's the only English version of the Bible that is the Word of God. Any other Bible that says something else, that words things differently or creates another doctrine, is not God's Word, and it is not holy. It may have holy stamped on the front cover, but so does the Roman Catholic Church. It is not holy. And those who hear the Master's voice know His Word. Mr. Zubra, I've made this video in love, and I hope that I'm talking to you right now. I hope that you're going to hear this message. And you're welcome to contact me. If you have any questions, I want you to contact me. I'm here for you. I've prayed for you. And all you have to do is just go to the website that's on the top of this video, www.swordofthevaliant.com. Go to the contact page, and my email address is right there, right there before the whole world. And if you want, I'll give you my phone number. And you and I can talk. Now, I, I'm not interested in a debate, and I'm not interested in having you teach me Calvinism, just like I'm not interested in having a Jehovah's Witness teach me their religion, or a Mormon teach me their religion. Because I'm commanded in the Scripture that if any man come unto me and bring not this doctrine, receive him not into my house, meaning bid him Godspeed. But I'm telling you that if you are pricked in your heart, and if you have a desire to hear the Word of God so that you might be saved, then I'm here for you. And if you laugh and mock at this and call me an idiot, that's between you and God. Okay? It's not for me to defend myself about it. I'm not, it's not my word. Okay, And I'm not offended by it if you think I'm an idiot or a moron or whatever. Um, I'm just here to preach God's word to you because I love you. And because I've thought about this for years. And like I said, I did write you a letter several years ago and I have gotten no reply. And it's just been on my heart lately more and more and more to make this video. So if those of you who are watching this video know Kevin Zuber, please forward this video to him. Please, I beseech you, in the name of Jesus Christ, forward this to him and beseech him to watch it and to listen to it and to take the time to hear the word of God. There are no Calvinists in the kingdom of God. Calvinism is completely contrary to the doctrine of Christ. The gospel of Christ still is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believes it. And it is my desire that you, Kevin Zuber, would hear and believe the doctrine of Christ and that you would be like Paul the Apostle who counted all this theological knowledge of the law as dumb, and that you would embrace the truth of the law and understand it as it was written, as it was intended to be understood by revelation from Jesus Christ and not by the garbage of seminaries. I made this video for you in love. I'm here for you. In Jesus' name.